Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Friday of the fourth week of Lent, but it's also a special solemnity. Today is the solemnity of St. Joseph, husband of the Blessed Virgin Mary. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who was called the Christ. Now, this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. When Joseph awoke, He did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, of course, today the reading that we're using is the Nativity of Jesus as told in the Gospel of Matthew. And, of course, Luke is the one that goes into great detail. But here in Matthew's Gospel, we really get a glimpse into how the incarnation affected Joseph and what part he played in terms of preparing the world for the coming of the Messiah. And we have here a man and a woman who are betrothed in marriage, Joseph and Mary. Now, in Jewish marriage, they are first betrothed, which means they are legally married. It's not an engagement. They are legally married, but there is a time Uh, an interval between their marriage and when the bride actually is ushered to the groom's home and there begins to live with him. And there's special festivity involved in that particular part of the marriage. And it is at that time when that is done that, that the marriage is consummated. Well, here we have Mary and Joseph in this uh, intermediate state awaiting the time where they will live together when it becomes apparent that she is pregnant. And I think it's important what we find in Matthew's uh, writing here in verse 19 and saying, Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man. And that really goes to the very heart of who Joseph is. He is righteous. He is good, not just doing things in a good way, but he is good at the very core of his being. He's a virtuous man, one that is desirous always to do right. And so he's very fervent in wanting to follow uh, the law that uh, that the covenant uh, required him to follow. And so that's why you find Joseph with Mary later on taking Jesus and presenting him in the temple. That's exactly what needed to do or or be done by a couple when their child was uh, uh, of age, ready to go there. Uh, And then, of course, before that, uh, the child was circumcised according to the law, again initiated by the father as a part of his covenant relationship. Later on, you see the Holy Family going uh, to Jerusalem for the major feasts. And so there are ways in which we see that Joseph is earnest in not only practicing his faith, but incorporating that faith into every part of his life, including his family. Well, now he has a problem. He's a righteous man, and yet he also respects his wife. He doesn't want to expose her to shame. In fact, if it had been uh, known publicly that, uh, that she was pregnant with the assumption that she had been an adulteress, then, of course, she would be stoned. But they would have first had to find the one who uh, was guilty with her of adultery. 
So he was in a really tough position and decided that what he would do was simply divorce her quietly, that he would not make a spectacle, but they would just, uh, he would part ways with her at that point because he was, of course, uh, looking at the evidence, assuming that she had been unfaithful. Well, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream at this point and clarifies for Joseph exactly what had taken place and corroborating what Mary experienced, that he was um, going to become uh, the foster father of the Son of God. And so the angel says, Do not be afraid to take your wife into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that the child has been conceived. So now Joseph is aware that this is a special child, the incarnation, and its mystery is one that was uh, accomplished through the Holy Spirit. And he even tells Joseph that he's going to have a son, and the name of the child should be Jesus. And that he will be the one, he is the Messiah, come to save the people from their sins. And of course, as he woke up, Joseph did exactly what he was asked to do. And I think one of the things that we can see, and you know, this being the year of St. Joseph, with Pope Francis uh, making that declaration on December 8th, that it was going to be a year where we focus upon him, that, that this is a good time for us to remember what Joseph brings to us in terms of how we can emulate him, how we can look to his life and be inspired on how we are to live ours, that we're to live our lives as righteous individuals, righteous persons before God, having that relationship with God that honors him in everything that goes on in our life, and to do things in a righteous way, not to uh, be vindictive and vengeful upon others, uh, but to take care to, to do what is right in the eyes of the Lord toward one another as well. This has been a year where a lot of people have been taking very seriously their uh, opportunity to consecrate their lives to St. Joseph, which means they basically just want to use him as a template, as a model, as an inspiration for how they want to live their lives. And they've used uh, Father Don Calloway's book, Consecration of St. John, the Wonders of Our Spiritual Father, as a guide toward uh, that desire to live their lives more like uh, this one who was used of God in such a mighty way. So today on this solemnity, let us remember the great saint who was the husband of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the foster father of the Son of God, and entrusted by God to raise this son who was the redeemer of the world. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, I hope you enjoy a good solemnity, and the Lord willing, we will again be together tomorrow for day by day. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.